Easter has become so heavily commercialized these days that the start of spring sparks supermarkets to load the aisles with Easter cards, Easter bunnies, Easter eggs, Easter bonnets, Easter foods and spring daffodils. But for many devout Christians, the real focus of Easter is on Jesus' resurrection and their belief that he died on the cross so that their own sins could be forgiven. Why do people celebrate Easter? When did the celebration of Easter first begin? Do people know the true meaning of Easter and its significance to Christianity? What is the truth? When you think about Easter and you think about the Bible, you're not really thinking about a cyclical event, you're thinking about one huge event. Easter is the most important time of the year for Christians. In preparation for this day, many Christians around the world observe some or all of the special days associated with it. Beginning with Shrove Tuesday, also known as Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras, Ash Wednesday, followed by the 40-day period of abstinence or fasting known as Lent. Easter as a big public festival, we're talking about looking at its origins going back to the 4th century, but it's, what it celebrates as a faith goes right back to the start of Christianity, if you see what I mean. This period concludes with Holy Week, Palm Sunday and Holy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Trigium, Holy Thursday, Good Friday and Saturday, with the last day being Easter Sunday. Easter season starts with Shrove Tide, which is on a Tuesday. In England, it's known as Pancake Day, but in other parts of the world, it's known as Mardi Gras and Fat Tuesday. My parents were Catholic, so that means we would have been brought up in the Catholic tradition. So that means um, leading up to Easter, we would have had participated in the celebration of Lent. So we would be always guided by parents that Lent is coming and you should think of something to give up. Um, and I, I remember that with my brothers and sisters, even though some of us were very young, and this went through my whole progression of growing up as a, as a young teen in the Catholic Church. But I think essentially, we would all sit down together and try to figure out what we want to give up. Shrove Tuesday is the first Tuesday before Ash Wednesday and the last day for celebrating and feasting before the 40-day Lenten period of fasting. It takes its name from the word shrive or to confess. On Shrove Tuesday, Christians confess their sins and ask God for forgiveness. As Lent is a time of abstinence, of giving up one's favorite things, Many see Shrove Tuesday as a last chance to indulge and to use up the foods that are not allowed in Lent. In England, the tradition of eating pancakes originated because this was the best way to consume as much milk, fats and eggs. In France, this day came to be known as Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras because it was a day of consumption of all fats and fatty foods. Shrove comes from an old word which means confessing your sins, to be shriven and that's where the shrove come, comes from. But on that Tuesday, there was a special thing where, because they were going to be fasting, they ate up all the food there was in the house. So they would have had a big feast before the Lent started, and they got rid of lots of food in the house, because it would have been wasted otherwise. Ironically, for many people around the world, Shrove Tuesday has evolved into a day of extravagant indulgence. But for devout worshippers, the focus remains on confession of one's sins, repentance and prayer. But overall, there are no instructions in the Bible or from Jesus to observe this day. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the 40-day Lenten season. Is there any scriptural basis for Ash Wednesday? Ash Wednesday is the day after Shrove Tuesday, which marks the beginning of the Lenten season, when special services are held in churches. In this service, the priest marks an ash sign of a cross on each worshipper's forehead. This symbol indicates that the person is remorseful of his sins. It has also reminded them that we all come from ashes, and to ashes we all will return. The marking on the forehead with ash marks the person's commitment to Jesus Christ and God. 
and is a symbol of repentance for the wrong things Christians think they have done in the past year. The ashes are made from palms from the previous year's Palm Sunday, which had been burnt, and the ashes are com come from that. Jonah went to the city of Nineveh to preach um, God to them and said that the people of Nineveh were wicked and they needed to repent. Well, the people of Nineveh, as they say in, 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 the, in, the, in, in that book in the Bible, that they, they fasted in sackcloth and ashes, that they put on sackcloth and sprinkled ashes on their head. And uh, so for us, Ash Wednesday, that's the first day of Lent. And so we call it Ash Wednesday. And then we just put a little, it's not very dramatic, just very simple, little mark of ashes, little some ashes put on the head. But some different countries, they actually sprinkle ashes on their head. Some have linked this holy day to sorrowful repentance by sprinkling oneself with ashes, as mentioned in the Old Testament. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colours that was on her and laid her hand on her head, and went on crying. 2 Samuel 13, 19 For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Jonah 3, 6 However, these references cannot be used to justify the practice of creating a new day called Ash Wednesday. These verses of the Old Testament clearly mention how early Christians grieved sorrowfully by covering themselves in ashes, or by wearing handmade garments of sackcloth covered in ashes, not by having a little holy ash cross marked on their forehead by a priest or minister. The 40 days of Lent are a period of abstinence and penance. But was this something which Prophet Jesus taught? It reminds us of our own death, it reminds us that time is short, it reminds us that things in our lives will never stay the same for long and we have to think about ourselves. So Lent is a time, as I say, for penitence but also thinking about your faith. What we call Lent, it's a period of, um, of fasting or of prayer in preparation for um, Easter. Now we say, we use the number 40 but it's never exactly 40 because of the way the weeks work out but it's 40 plus. And we calculate that, once we calculate Easter Sunday, we count back approximately six weeks that, so that we will have 40 weekdays. According to the Encyclopedia of the Early Church, Lent is mentioned for the first time in 334 by Athanasius. Originally, people did not observe Lent for more than a week. Some kept it for one or two days. Others kept it for 40 consecutive hours in the false belief that only 40 hours had elapsed between Jesus' death and his resurrection, according to Christian doctrine. Eventually, Lent became a 40-day period of fasting or abstaining from certain foods. There are no references to Lent in the Old and New Testaments, nor any references of Jews or Christians observing an annual fasting period of 40 days before the Passover. Those who practice Lent justify its observation by linking the repentance and fasting of 40 days with references relating to the number 40. And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Genesis 7.12 And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Exodus 34.28 According to the New Testament, Jesus never observed Lenten fasting. Neither did he command or teach his apostles to do so. However, Christians believe that the duration of Lent can be identified with Jesus' time spent in the wilderness. During Lent, Christians commemorate the time when Jesus retired to the desert to fast and pray, before beginning his work for God. It also is a remembrance of when Jesus was tempted by Satan, but was able to successfully resist and remain steadfast, and thus succeeded in the eyes of God. The Roman Church developed a high mass for celebrating the resurrection of Christ, but attached to it much of the paganism of the Spring Festival. Included in this process was the 40-day season of fasting known as Lent, adopted by Rome during the 6th century. It corresponds to a 40-day fast practiced by ancient Egyptians. Others identify Lent with a practice among 
Babylonian worshippers of Ceramis. The death and resurrection of Tammuz was celebrated by a great annual festival preceded by the Lenten fast. The question arises that if the Roman Church was aware that the observation of Lent was not an inherent part of the biblical teaching nor of Jesus' practice, then why did they constitute a pagan holiday? Right back to the start, people have questioned the faith, particularly, but more so um, when Christianity became more common, people started to question the faith as is no that they and started to give alternative theories. But no, the official teaching is death and resurrection. Many hold the view that the Christian Church amalgamated the festivals in the hope of subtly integrating Christianity into the nation at large. Its origin is the pre-festival fast, which was also observed at this time of year by those being initiated into the Christian.